Wrestle Buddy Podcast. All about wrestling. Subscribe and follow for more content. Welcome, Wrestle Buddies. My name is Maddie Laws, and I am honored and privileged to be interviewing Rich Swan of Impact Wrestling. Thank you for coming on, Rich. Hey, thank you for having me, Maddie. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, there's a lot to talk about. You're such a busy man, so we don't got all the time in the world, so I'll just kick right into it. Uh, yes, indeedy. We like kicking it in nice, hard, and fast, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeedy. So, first off, I'm going to ask the typical question. We've been without a crowd for over a year now. How does how has that been for you? How's you know, the it's crowd uh, it's definitely it's been something that uh, you know has never happened in our profession before. Uh, you know, uh, everything that we do, uh, it just you know, it depends on what the reaction of the crowd is. And, you know, not having that for a little over a year now, uh, it, like I said, it's a different experience. But if you love the game, if you love professional wrestling, you know that there's those people that are watching behind that red light and behind that camera. And you want to go out there and you want to give that same energy that you would if, there was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 20,000 in that building, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that heart and passion that translates through. And if you had that mindset going in, knowing that you're about to wrestle in front of no crowd, it's definitely going to make slam anniversary mean so much more because baby, we got people coming back. And speaking of people coming back, Slammiversary sold out in over in just about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely insane. Are, do you have any nerves going into this event? Like, you know, over I, a year I with have, no crowd. I have nerves going into every event, but this one is definitely uh, one of the most important because for us, uh, for Impact Wrestling, this is going to be the first time we have uh, people see what we've been doing live, what the product has turned into. Now, this is the first time, this is our first opportunity to really skyrocket our company on the biggest night for Impact on its anniversary, you know? So it's, the nerves are hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, and you've got a huge match at Slammiversary, a four-way tag team match for the titles. There's yes, you and Willie Mack, TJP and Falaba, Violent by Design, and the Good Brothers coming back for what seems like they've been away for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, they've uh, they've had a little bit of business to take care of with their Good Brother leader. Uh, of the elite uh, Kenny Omega they've been uh, you know enjoying their perks to the forbidden door helping Kenny you know be the top champion of every single promotion that we can think of <laughs> you know yeah unfortunately Kenny took that title off of you but yeah he did uh, he did you and you and Mac were top contenders right before you went out with an injury and yes, sir. you coming back from the injury, busting your ass to get back here. What does that mean to you to be able to have this spotlight on the biggest stage, like you said, at Slammiversary? You know, it, it means the world to me because, you know, Willie and I, we didn't break up as a tag team. We didn't, we didn't have any uh, differences. We were always, ever since he came in, to Impact Wrestling in 2018 at Bound for Glory when we tagged up and defeated um, Ethan Page and Matt Seidel. You know, we were always on the same page. And then when I got injured, you know, um, it just swept the rug from underneath Willie and I. And 
you know, we, you know, uh, I want to say that we would have beaten the North for the tag team championships and made history alongside Tessa Blanchard the same night when she beat Sammy Callahan for the world championship. Um, but so, like, when I came back, uh, you know, I had that opportunity at the world championship and Eric Young, he just was a poor sport and he re-injured my ankle. And, you know, I had full intention on, especially uh, if I was not successful, you know, in the world title picture, to go back with Willie Mack and we go back to where we were headed to, and that was the tag team championship. But Eric Young, he swung that in another direction. And, you know, you mentioned also about Kenny. Uh, see, this is an amazing feeling because everybody in this Slammiversary match that we have coming up here, uh, I've got personal history with. You see, Eric Young, he tried to he tried to take me out. And now, I don't know who in Violent by Design is going to be coming at Slammiversary. I don't know if it's going to be the combination of Cody and Rhino. I don't know if it's going to be the combination of Rhino and Big Daddy Joe Doring. I don't know if Eric Young is going to suddenly become cleared to wrestle and he and put himself and interject and defend those championships because they do do it. Three bird rules. And then I look on the other side and then I have the good brothers, the guys who tried to make my life a living hell alongside getting in my mind with Don Callis, you know, uh, ahead of my big world championship title unification match against Kenny. And, you know, it worked. But now I have the opportunity alongside my boy, Willie Mack, to get the revenge on these guys because I don't want to see them with the tag team straps, daddy. And then I got TJP. <laughs> we got TJP and Falaba. I've only got to step into the ring with Falaba once. And Eric Young with this crazy, devious, ridiculous mind, he, he ruined it. He ruined it in that tag match that Willie and I had on Impact TV on Access. And that was bull crap. But see the thing with, you know, but see the thing with TJ and I, we have a whole lot of history. You know, it's no secret that we were up there in New York. You know what I'm saying, brother? We were up there in New York being cruiserweights and, you know, and it was fine. And he beat me in the second round semifinal elimination tournament. Uh, and then we've traded wins back and forth on the 205 live. And we've traded excellent wins matches over there. On Monday nights. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And, you know, now we're going to all throw it in. We're going to throw it in the mix and we're going to see what this pressure cooker is going to be cooking, baby. <laughs> Whatever crazy. it is, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I apologize for that long-winded answer. I just, hey, no <laughs> worries. It was a bit yeah, of a long-winded yeah. question, so. Hey, hey, um, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Uh, Y'all got a bunch of new talent coming in. We just saw Lady Frost. Uh, yeah. W. Morrissey came in not too long ago. What are your thoughts on oh, that? Yeah. Uh, where are, you, are you excited to see more? You know, I'm excited to see people like that, like Lady Frost or uh, W. Morrissey or anybody. Uh, I don't care if you're a name or somebody that's made it on TV elsewhere or if you're just coming in. I feel like fresh faces will always cause people to be interested in what we're doing and in our product. And sometimes... The unknown can be one of the biggest factors and one of the biggest puzzle pieces for your company. And, you know, uh, uh, guys like W. Morrissey, who is somebody that's had the opportunity to be in front of thousands and millions and have that exposure, him coming to impact, even though I don't agree with everything that he's done, being as though he booted 
face off several times. Uh, at that same token, he is great for Impact Wrestling, and it does nothing but just make us a bigger commodity. Um, and with Slammiversary coming up, of course, you're not the only match on the card. We've got Ultimate X. We've got Deanna Perrazzo versus her mystery opponent. Um, we've got Fire and Flava defending their tag titles. What What's your favorite match other than yours coming up on that night? You know, I definitely cannot wait to see what Josh Alexander does uh, in this Ultimate X. Um, you know, he's not much of the high flyer. Uh, and we all know how that match is structured. We've seen guys like Saban, AJ, Daniels, uh, su uh, Suicide. You know what I'm saying? Guys that are, you know, willing to put their body uh, on the line doing death-defying high-risk uh, attempts, uh, no matter how high uh, the stage is or, or trust or wherever the cables are at, they're going to, you know, jump from wherever and try to dive and get that belt that's hanging on that X. You know, and the thing with Josh Alexander, he's a different type of machine. The thing with Josh is he is a wrestler's wrestler. He is somebody that can uh, put somebody in holds and tie them in knots and keep you there forever for as long as he wants to. He has that heart. He has that endurance. Uh, but when it comes to a match type as this, I'm going to be surprised if he walks out uh, X Division champion, but in that same token and in that same respect, Josh Alexander, if you go back and look at the BTI before the Impact and leading into the Impact television show on Access, the match that he had with TJP for the X Division the Iron Man championship, match. yes, indeedy, that shows how much heart that man has. He will not give up. And it doesn't matter really what stipulation you put in front of that man. If he's a high flyer or not, he will find a way. I can so totally very, see Alexander snatching an, snatching an ankle from someone just hanging off that X. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and you know what? If they pull it down and they drop the belt in agony, and he catches it or something like that. He's the winner. He ain't even have to go up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a great idea. Maybe I might have to whisper that to him. Hey, man, whoever tries to get your belt, man, just freaking Matthew said, just crank that ankle, bro. <laughs> crank that oh. ankle, brother. Um, yes, indeedy. We've got a few more minutes. Uh, I feel like... I can ask this. Uh, past, present, future. Who is your dream match for Rich Swan? Past, present, future. Let's see. In the past, I would say, man, I'd say Hayabusa. I'd say Hayabusa Ooh. would be a match that I would definitely uh, love to have. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him when I was in Japan for Dragon Gate, torn back and forth, and I got to do the standing 450. It was an evolution of all of his moves for Dragon Gate at Cork and Hall. We, uh, myself, uh, Ricochet, and Pac, we all got to do a evolution of things that he's created. Uh, myself with the standing 450, Pac with the shooter, and he, you know, he made an evolution and, you know, added the 360 rotation. Um, and then you got Ricochet with the double moonsault. When Hayabusa, when he saw that at Cork and Hall, he, he was able to stand up. He wasn't able to walk, and he greeted us, and he just basically was like look guys you guys are amazing uh 
keep doing what you're doing. I see all of your stars growing bright. And that was one of like the biggest, like craziest moments for me. And, you know, before he passed away to see him actually be able to walk to the ring. That was amazing. And like, I, I would have loved to wrestle him present. I'd say. Uh, probably. Probably TJP. I'd like to have a, another match with him. See what we could do. See what we could work out on Impact Wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I've always had great chemistry in the ring with him. And uh, I think he's one of the best scientific wrestlers slash high flyers, hybrid wrestlers, to, to you know, to say uh, he's amazing. And uh, for the future, man, the future is super bright. Uh, there's a lot of guys that I'd like to see at Impact Wrestling and a lot of guys that I'd like to wrestle. I'd like to wrestle a wrestler named Ray Fury, who I've seen, uh, Mass Luchador out of New York, um, lives in, I want to say, uh, Mississippi now. Um, there's another person. There's guys like, man, Starboy Charlie. I don't know if you've ever I, heard of him. I've actually heard about him. Yeah, he's he's a great 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 high flyer right now coming up uh another guy lee moriarty who is a uh, on the independent scene just killing it right now and uh he's somebody that i'd like to step into the ring with in impact wrestling and i would have liked to said two cold scorpio for past but <laughs> i actually already i i just got you to, just wrestled him didn't you know, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. I actually I saw that event for GCW. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it was definitely a uh, nice little dream come true if we can, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> boyhood dream, HBK style, in the middle <laughs> of the ring, crying with the belt, hold, <laughs> hold me high, t- hold it high. That's how it felt, baby. All right. Well. um, I've got just one last question. Uh, of course, you see yourself cha- uh, chasing the world title again. Do you see it coming from Kenny Omega or do you see it coming from Sammy Callahan? You know, being in the ring with both of those guys, Sammy and Kenny, I can say they're both intense. And, you know, there's a different level of intensity between the two and the thing is with both I want to say they're the perfect match because their levels of intensity they are different but at the same time their personalities they match up quite the same because between Kenny Omega he is an egotistical person he's driven by things that make him feel great and the things that make him feel great when he goes out there if he's feeling on top of the world chances are with that confidence boost he will be on top of the world that's what makes him the best about machine but then you have sammy callahan on the other hand who is not a rational thinker. He's not somebody who goes out there and just, oh, I've got this plan, I've got that plan. He goes out there and he tries to murder, wreck, and destroy. And if that plan doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? He's just going to figure out another thing right there on the spot. And just to see those guys mesh up, I just don't know who could win. I know that Sammy Callahan is tough. I know that he's sick. He's maniacal. He's twisted. But the thing with Kenny Omega is he has everything strategically 
planned out. And if I was going to be a betting man, I'd say the best belt machine is going to walk out Impact World Champion. All right. Well, thank you once again, Rich. This was an amazing interview. It was great to talk with you. Um, I appreciate you having me, man. Where can the people find you, Rich? Hey, man. You know, I actually, I'm not on the social media anymore because, you know, it, it just got a little bit too toxic for me. But now that everyone, you know, can finally go to shows now, just come check out my stuff at a show, you know, come up to me at an event. I don't care if it's at a TV event and an indie show. Just come on up, ask for a picture. I'll take it with you because at the end of the day, we ain't nothing without our peeps. You know what I'm saying? All right. Once again, it was amazing to have you on, Rich. Thank you again. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Bless have a great you, day. brother. Yes, indeed. You too. Peace. Peace.